Welcome everyone to another live stream. A little bit improvised because a little bit out of time, but nonetheless, so many people waiting and asking. Wanted to pre uh, present you some more thoughts and uh, yeah, not pretty PowerPoint aka open office presentation because time and money and stuff. But so to summarize, I wanted to summarize some more thoughts and uh, I kept thinking and planning and drafting some things. Um, obviously not yet that much to show. We could also discuss whether it even makes, um, uh, there is a business sense in that with all the open source and making money and operating system and certainly in this day and age not the most easy, even if it, let's say, we create the most amazing operating system like the successor of, let's say, BOS or QNX, not to say this relatively boring one address based Unixes, then uh, is there even a business case, but probably we can discuss it in another video later today or tomorrow or something. Today I wanted to sh quickly focus on some interesting technical thoughts. And so why am I thinking this? Uh, those who are uh, recurring subscribers certainly now do this. Funny previous Rock Linux now um, T2 Linux for 20 years, so relatively invested in Linux yet. I'm, as you probably guessed from other previous videos, not the most 100% satisfied with the state of security issues and also, well, certainly the whole, uh, the whole software stack written in C and display server and yeah, the decade of Wayland and oh, there's a new Linux kernel speaking about, um, can't even make the stuff up. Uh, 2020, we have now every third day or so on average a bug fix release because uh, security bounce uh, revert and yeah somehow not even that large yeah one yeah 2020 and RCU schedule active of IPv4 um, something uh, silence suspicious oh, this is only a warning yeah 2020 we still need to silence single address space warning so what is all this stuff about what I envision uh, is here a little bit um, of uh, drafting the future and uh, certainly we're not the only one, of course, microkernels, not the newest concept already since at least the 80s. And uh, certainly uh, Linus Torvalds, even at, at that time, there was even already Minix from Andreas Tenbaum um, that still didn't take off at that. And Linux was just a small hobby, not as big as uh, Minix or GNU or something, and not to mention um, GNU Herd. Um, the reason I do not plan to contribute in Minix because Minix is extremely vintage, like vintage as C code base as Linux, so so much to, uh, yeah, YOLO, whatever. And um, the same for GNU Herd with uh, not as, well, in the meantime, already decades deprecated Mach kernel as not the highest performance microkernel to start with. And um, in general, you might ask why. The only thing, maybe like something like maybe take a closer look to Fuxia and, but this is also another point. Basically, I could make like at least three videos of discussing stuff like this IT and coffee. And um, also the question, should we just um, take the best pieces of the industry and like, which also has many implications, certainly business wise, code wise and educational learning wise and licensing wise, because other people are doing this. There is this uh, G note or something uh, based on L4 here also actually in Germany, um, but um, without having analyzed it too much, basically what from it, from the outside, it looks like they take everything and throw everything together, like everything in the kitchen sink and hope that something sticks or something of that sort. And this is why um, as much as I, well, certainly we appreciate research and people doing something else than vintage single address space Unix. Um, this is also why I'm thinking there have been so many other systems. Maybe we anyway build something mostly from scratch, but we can discuss this uh, in depth in some other video. So speaking about this stuff, so what is it about? My critique in the Linux kernel is certainly uh, ever changing code, but also that everything runs in one single address space. So starting from your network driver to your storage to LVM, to logical volume management, like basically everything, just all your joystick, mouse driver, your keyboard. Yeah, we, I think we even had this also. Um, just new 
uh, here in, in some kernels, not sure in which of them, but we even had um, in like uh, VT console stuff, uh, some new like back scrolling something, kernel memory corruptions, like yeah, 30 years in the making and still some console layer uh, buffer over underrun stuff. Um, Ah, Stefan Paletta is only here for the runs. It's not even, anyway, I hope not that much of run, but also some critical thinking. So um, given that the state of Linux and we still have certainly security issues, um, many of them, uh, as people already researchers in the 80s, came already to the conclusion, hey, it's certainly this concept um, with not single address space, what does it mean? It means in the Linux kernel or other Unix kernels, everything runs in one address space basically if even that term is new to you that means like one application think your open office or uh, open uh, or microsoft office does any application just that this is your kernel like think you have your browser and you basically put everything in there from network to memory management and stuff and certainly unfortunately this is also how browsers are built but certainly this is also why your PC, be it Windows, Mac OS or Linux in 2020 still can crash uh, way too often. And yeah, with also the modern complexity of Thunderbolt and other or graphic drivers that my impression, especially on Mac OS, but maybe even still Linux with all the modern stuff, unfortunately happens all too often. We just probably need to possible oops yeah this was actually <laughs> can't mix this stuff up uh, fixed for possible oops in asoc hd audio bindings like yeah um certainly more oops uh, prevent an oops in rx rx rpc release course like yeah so as uh, that is a basic concept and this would mean that if your usb driver like your keyboard driver crashes because keyboard mapping because a user like yeah the usual stuff the user an evil user um, loads some malformed keyboard mapping that overruns some buffer only crashes hopefully the input USB input driver or um, if you have a bug in the firewall only your firewall your IPv4 or IPv6 process here like application Unix server device driver file server network server potentially so that only at least only the network server crashes or um, stuff like that and what I would like to try to do is um, actually uh, what over the next um, months anyway so again today only drafting I've already some more code but today I only wanted to show you low-level uh, drafting and this drafting also means that I do not work on this full-time right so this is some like 20% extra code project of like uh, development and research and hopefully also some pieces that we can reuse in, in other places just to write some more modern code. So what I would try, um, what I would like to do is that also what I really started to dislike in the open source landscape is that the level of code duplication. You have all the code, well starting at the BIOS, even like think your latest and greatest EFI BIOS, it has networking code, it has code for um, graphic input and output, um, other um, file system, even FAT reading, and the bootloader has it again. Um, so maybe we make you some notes, um, just in, in whatever code duplication. So what this means is all the code uh, is, like let's call this BIOS, doesn't really matter much. Then we have the bootloader. Um, then we have the kernel uh, with all its modules and drivers and whatnot. And then we have even user space. So um, what I mean with that is I find it rather silly that nowadays you have some latest and greatest, let's say full disk encryption, you have some looks or however you want to pronounce that in English or Lux or whatever, uh, full disk encryption and LVM2. And you have basically all the code duplicated in all your kernel. And because you certainly want to boot from that in your bootloader. And last but not least in uh, your user space tools that work for, for this. So what I would like to do actually is, um, and that is also, I can of course just take some L4 kernel that was at least, yeah, how old is this stuff? And 
university research came to the conclusion hey, this is so much more maintainable, stable, and uh, yet very few people um, used it for PC operating systems anyway. So I could take an L4 kernel and I could take whatever I find and try like this Gnode uh, here, uh, uh, Gnode, mess everything together and hope something sticks. But um, I would try um, step by step over the years anyway um, to avoid this. So the way I would tr try to avoid this is my idea is to also have not only a micro kernel but also a very small um, nano kernel uh, slash hall that is the very like it's a very tiny bootloader that can do nothing and load like platform specific of BIOS, EFI, MIPS, ARCs and PowerPC open firmware and so on and is basically only the loader like can next to does nothing only load modules like think elf objects like think your Linux kernel or then our micro kernel and load because we have this anyway so we so the, the benefits is of this micro kernel setup we anyway want to move this to user mode processors so my idea is why not use the same code modules for x2 file system loading for lvm for full disk encryption for all the other stuff why is this important you add a new feature like set standard compression to better fs and you need to have the same huge amount of code in grub2 for example you want to boot this from lvm2 because logical volume management partitioning stuff you need to have this code in grub2 and uh, last but not least you want to have full disk encryption and uh, add a new algorithm you need to add this to the user space tools to the kernel tools and to you guessed it grub2 right so um, with this setup, I would um, try to uh, unify this that except the very small smallest loader bits that hopefully are just some hundred k that are loadable from your EFI, um, hopefully probably not much PC legacy stuff and uh, other stuff directly load this user space processes and avoid exactly this uh, code application theoretically if you have open firmware like not 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 open firmware but your own firmware like system 76 or other servers like linux uh, linux bios or core boot um, also the next code application right why not have the most minimal uh, code there and like only very basic initialization and memory management and loads the same file system drivers right all the code is also copy and pasted to core boot anyway so um, starting with some nano kernel hull um, that would also so this hull stuff hardware hull stands for uh, a hardware abstraction layer so also yeah what maybe people write something with windows which is also um, just use windows it's an entire blob uh, nvidia binary blobs and by something anyway um yeah, so of course Windows has something like this hardware abstraction layer somehow and the next thing what I also find really annoying in Linux is working on all these other architectures like PowerPC and MIPS, all of those architectures uh, or ARM um, historically you had to compile the Linux kernel specifically for one kernel because of different address layouts um, load address, other interrupt controller like ARM, all the ARM socks all had different um, interrupt controller and um, and uh, other I.O. devices, serials and uh, frame buffer and so on. And this is also a little bit of an historic mistake that probably should already be done differently decades ago, but only in recent times this was um, getting like like the last decade even the Linux kernel maintainer realizes is too cumbersome and as you see so these are all the ARM architectures like seriously as like yeah also um, <laughs> the benefits of standards right not everyone brings it their own sock so what this means is on ARM mostly but also MIPS um, certainly not as interesting for many but our SGI uh, MIPS collection here each of those needs an own kernel, right? In my opinion, totally uh, hilarious um, and unnecessary um, for at least, well, you could always, especially for the SGI MIPS case, 
instead of having there some hash if dev IP27 uh, or whatever that might be or config doesn't really matter too much how they exactly they named this instead of if config IP27 then uh, the in ingress or whatever this was called there um, graphic stuff if it's even the same graphic stuff just a little bit layout and this is also really design decision that is not very wise that you can't even the same drivers that are mostly the same of course on the PC side like some ATI Radeon 7000, 8000 or something um, which, which is just a little bit different of course doesn't have like some if dev and you need to sp you build a, a kernel specifically to your Radeon graphic hardware this is of course very silly um, so with this um, I would maybe even for risk 5 certainly with this MIPS only for our education but think risk 5 or whatever maybe they create a similar crazy setup but what this allows you would be um, that you have some nano kernel that does nothing right uh, not nothing does not do much except taking care of the address space layout memory allocation and um, stuff like interrupts certainly then your interrupt abstraction is in there because the interrupts might be different on an SGI um, octane than uh, from uh, origin 200 or something of that sort or arm you see all the arm stuff all the interrupt handling and um, IO addresses or so on. So that the kernel, our microkernel, would not use directly like poke around in PowerPC socks or ARM sock interrupt stuff but use this services probably even linking directly to this so like the microkernel runs in one address space like a very thin abstraction layer so that we have one like normal APIs like readable code of interrupt handling and the low-level details uh, taken care of of this nano kernel HAL abstraction layer so that we do not need as many specifically compiled microkernels um, and porting to a new architecture would be um, just adding the interrupt and other abstractions to this nano kernel HAL layer so that you only load IP27, SGI IP27, SGI IP30 and certainly you need still the drivers but having some bootable stuff. What this also I hope would allow today the issue is often that if something goes wrong during booting especially on ARM, MIPS, PowerPC, you see I'm a little bit looking over the plate here of x86 where x86 stuff usually works a little bit more but what I would also hope that this allows is that if something goes wrong on ARM, MIPS, PowerPC often you have nothing and I would also find it would be really amazing if um, if something goes wrong you get like more than, more than nothing because um, the setup with this Linux kernel is you, you get all or nothing right so the kernel is loaded takes over and either it works or it doesn't and on ARM and MIPS if you work on a new board or exotic boards and early board support enablement um, often you get nothing or if it's um, if it's bit rotten stuff of SGI and IBM fame then um, you also are often left with spurry stuff so that would theoretically also allow for better integration with this runtime services of open firmware and uh, arcs and so on to have an hopefully smoother experience uh, booting this and debugging this and um, xen, xen, xen. Um, another thing so that, that is the low level stuff so that avoiding code duplication here and um, for file systems so that all the file system like sync LVM tools um, are only created once and um, do not need to be duplicated. The same effect is also on my um, setup here of portable SSD booting that I need to enter the, the, the full disk encryption password twice right once in grub. Of course you could if you don't encrypt your grub kernel init RD stuff then you can get away with this but also not the smoothest integrated experience that full disk encryption in grub and if you don't hack something around Linux kernel is booting you need to enter the full disk encryption password again um, not the end of the world I can certainly live with it but it would also be great if that is a little bit better integrated um, but um, yeah anyway then the next thing is of course graphics and when you take a look at this I 
the reason I'm not full-time working on the PS3 RSX stuff is of course it's a lot of work and the Nvidia stuff is a little bit near to understand um, but more to this in a future video also and if you take a look at this uh, setup it's just from Wikipedia with all the here's Valent but it's a similar with Xorg of course um, with all the Linux kernel obstruction here um, KMS you see different APIs KMS for the CRTC's uh, DRMI API for submitting all the drawing buffers and um, then the different applications here Vulkan, Mesa and so on and um, this is also something of course in the last decade the Linux kernel people try to um, somehow make this at least a little bit more integrated from the standpoint of maybe getting away from the frame buffer but in my opinion on of course on Foronix like yay frame buffer should be deleted but frame buffer as it is not that bad in my opinion it's just like some bare linear usually linear um, address space to draw in graphics but um, these are really many components right I always found this was historically always a little bit fragile also you need the latest latest version of everything like libdrm so what why do they need to say the application um, loads into the address space here probably this libdrm radeon probably this one which provides the software api for opengl and so on why do they have a direct 3d9 for whatever reason mm, maybe wine and in this shared object they create the command buffers already that they are then submitted to the kernel and um, the kernel validates again the commands which is because again an evil application could submit commands that DMA all your precious data and passwords away so certainly this needs to be validated and I looked at this code always and each time I look in this code I get a headache unfortunately um, this is also somehow, yeah, the, in my opinion, having this here as a Radeon 3D server would be much more maintainable. This is a little bit, we will see how this turns out. This is a little bit how it actually has been a decade ago or 20 years ago with Utah GLX and having this uh, maybe running in the Xorg server. Um, we will see how this would work, but of course, given the, all the papers with microkernel suggest, or also from my own experience, writing as seen silicon motion link 3D prototyping this as a normal program that accesses the resources like PCI members, memory base address registers, and mapping this is much easier than doing this in the kernel um, for all the. 3D math and um, command buffer creation and stuff and um, the Linux kernel people's argument or the current DRM direct rendering manager argument was we can't trust the user space so we need to validate the command buffers in kernel again however you need this is the same code right either it's not like a Joe user password a, a Joe user program like Firefox is directly bit banging on your graphic card and initiating DMA transfers. So I would still argue it is the same secure, if not maybe more secure, but leave me in the comments below what you think. Probably some Xorg developers feel triggered and chime in later in the comments. We had this already previously, which is also amazing. But why do you, I, do, I don't see why trusting some command validation in the kernel should somehow be more trustworthy than having, well, we, we generate the command buffers in user space anyway. So your Firefox loads this with a DRM or Xorg um, Mesa libgl multiplexing for device drivers loads, ends up loading this libdrm. So this is running in the Firefox or whatever um, process or, or GIMP and so on, open office and creating directly creating the command buffers for 3d commands and submitting those to the kernel and what is less trustworthy if this is like sync your xorg server which is a user space process funny enough 
you need to trust this code anyway. So either it is some user space, like user space code that you at least can better debug and code review and test maybe with some test suite. Um, then submitting this in the kernel, leave me in the comments below. And maybe this would even, um, we will, we need to see how, where we get their performance wise, which is also why I prototyped so many low level stuff. I wanted to see different low level video GPU isolation stuff, of course, also Rodeo on the, the latest and greatest Rodeo and NVIDIA stuff is way more complicated, which is also why I started to look at Marshox Pahalia and stuff to get some more um, better understanding of different cards. But maybe even not have this kind of low level command buffer creation in the loaded into the application, but having them certainly sub some IO ring like lib U, uh, lib. IO ring, a shared buffer, like some high speed communication buffer of submitting 3D commands to the graphic server. So that would mean, what I want to say is that having a full stack, graphic stack in user space without kernel, because again, in a micro kernel, as seen here, all the device drivers are in user space anyways. All right, so we, have, we will have an NVMe, we will have a serial ATA, ATA, PS2, USB and so on. So we will have multiple user space device drivers and among other things, the graphic driver. And um, so I would try to prototype that, hopefully in more readable code. Um, we will see how far we get. The problem is, of course, this is also why creating, there you see this, between sourcing all of this from existing open source projects, like other BSDs and Haiku, and mixing everything together, what you find like in Gnode, or doing everything from scratch, certainly a rather large undertaking. Um, but I would rather see more modern code and not always the same uh, good old fashioned C code of doing everything manual, but a little bit more high level abstracted. And sometimes you can even achieve better performance with better high level abstraction, better optimizing algorithms and um, so on. Um, so that the applications would submit 2D and 3D requests to this user space, so not, not like card specific command buffers, and they would create it, um, be, would only be created once uh, here in our, um, in our card specific 3D driver. Um, that would be, will be interesting fun. Um, what would be really cool and maybe not sure if the Gnode people do they have here some screenshot. Um, what would be pretty cool um, actually is that, and, and you see uh, some people also do interesting stuff. What, so what, what this also means that it drastically, I would drastically want to reduce complexity here. So in this complexity of having a frame buffer driver and DRM driver, a kernel mode setting driver, and then act driver, you see many, many components. You see how many components we have here. They have here, of course, Wayland, but right now it's, of course, XOG server. I'm not sure if, do they have here two pictures of XOG also, or do they have here, just took here the next big thing, dear master, user space program, not even, what do we have here? But not to get too uh, much into the old fashioned stuff. Um, here was actually some XOG server, but what right now is, really old fashioned in Linux, you boot, you might have a frame buffer from open firmware from your BIOS. Then you have some uh, other 3D driver taking over, which sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. Like on the G4 cube of ours, it regressed, it doesn't work. On the Ultra Spark with an uh, Radeon XVR 100, it doesn't work because uh, bugs in pieces. So instead of all these different components, um, only having one driver that provides this services and what this theoretically could also allow is much more modern UI interaction, like not having all these different pieces, but I have one Windows server, like similar to Mac OS, which has some, or maybe probably Windows, so not looking that much into Windows bits and pieces, but you could really create really nice UI. For example, think, so let's think you take, take your Linux stuff, like today, all the like virtual terminals and stuff away. Um, which probably one before I continue in many people don't know, but this screen this, this also means we will not even have a virtual terminal level, level uh, layer, not, not any non, not, uh, kind of 
uh, console layer because certainly not in the kernel because that would be here in, in user space. And uh, probably this is also some stuff that we continue drafting here. Even some of the stuff we can even draft in Linux, right? Draft it in user space in Linux, write some fancy code like I've done for various graphic cards and then move it over to not, not running in Linux and also work from both sides, like do some RISC-V boot code there and do some graphic code on the Linux side and then eventually diverge this all together. Um, what many people don't realize, probably as far as I remember, this fancy screen, this GNU screen, this terminal multiplexer, um, as far as I remember, one the first time I read about this was 2000 or 1998 or something. And as far as I remember, this GNU screen was written um, for Hurt exactly for this reason, not having a um, terminal layer in the kernel, but with GNU Hurt being a microkernel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but as this is at least how I remember that, and certainly that makes sense. So that screen, screen the user space program screen, what we to nowadays use as server or otherwise local terminal multiplexer. Nowadays, of course, Tmux here, what we use. Anyway, there, there you see the concept, right? We can theoretically take like Tmux, the, the more modern screen replacement Tmux, and use this as like terminal um, layer, for example. And why should it be in the single address space here and potentially still cause some, do we have here VT, uh, KDB switch users, uh, something, uh, console users. Uh, ah, here, VT keyboard can't make this stuff up. Live here on this channel in 5.8. Uh, VT keyboard avoid signed integer overflow in K ASCII because, um, yeah, we write everything in C. That's fine. We can do it. Um, and um, yeah, so certainly you see there are a lot of people who have done this 20 years ago. I'm not the first to think microkernel are a great idea or um, moving a T TY layer, key, uh, terminal input output layer to the user space is a good idea. Certainly even the GNU Hurt people have done this maybe 30 years ago or something of that sort. Um, it certainly doesn't mean that screen has the greatest C code. Probably it hasn't, which is also why Tmux and other stuff was created in the meantime. Anyway, so this is also, I wanted to say that, but then the next thing is with this graphic, it's just some, again, G note here, because why not, uh, just to taking some random stuff as, as visualization, um, what, what we find here while discussing this. And what this also would allow for is to have, if, if we have some Windows server, like not, not this old fashioned stuff, but like one um, you boot, um, certainly so, if, if when we boot this nano kernel would most likely provide some frame buffer for low level drawing usually when you boot meaning like SGI, PS3, uh, PowerPC or your EFI um, BIOS doesn't really matter just for some early boot output stuff and um, our windowing server so what, what this means is, is in our kernel uh, in the future sometimes. So our Windows server would take over this and provide this services of allocating surfaces to draw and potentially load um, also some hardware isolated modules similar to macOS probably. And what you could do with this is also much more um, Hollywood-like uh, UI stuff. So not like this old-fashioned control Alt F1 uh, which probably only I and very few other low-level people use, like switching between virtual virtual consoles. This could theoretically create extremely snappy um, UI experience in terms of running here different um, um, workspaces, different terminals. You could have stuff like, um, because this is like one graphic server, you could have text overlays um, like sync pressing F12 or whatever they're thinking about. There was this Yar Quake or whatever. Um, one of was the first like Quake-like console and KDE is one of the first I remember that probably came up here from uh, the center top of the screen decades ago. And I only mention this because it doesn't need to be that you have a debugging console um, only with control, uh, control Alt F1 to switching to some other stuff. So. Theoretically, you could have text consoles, the 
Quake way of um, uh, pr providing this kind of debug access um, and creating much different experiences than when we, what we are used today. Also, this is a similar, if you were wondering, and probably you should take a look at, at the comments, you could create so much amazing cool stuff that is so much more snappier and, and more um, pleasantly integrated and more usable integrated than today. For example, um, if you think stuff about like um, cubes, OS for more secure stuff that usually is the last time I looked and remember they used Xen here of endorsed by uh, Edward Snowden and others. And as far as I remember, they use Xen um, and the setup is similar to ours, right? So um, having here some, uh, which graphic do I use best for that? I mean, basically Xen is, you could think of Xen like some very small um, abstraction layer here for which uh, several guest machines. And you could certainly create a really snappy, desktop experience, even secure if we certainly want to, where's even the graphic eye, so all the many graphics here, you could um, s s create a much more modern version of cubes so that you have um, launch, launch here different uh, operating systems here, you have here and even in this Wikipedia graphic microkernel based operating systems, Unix server, you could certainly have here Windows personalities, right? Windows server, like Windows subsystem for our better F, uh, better OS, um, yeah, um, Mac, Mac OS server, Linux server, whatever, and certainly multiple, right? So this was, of course, the idea Xen, um, for those who don't remember, Xen was even created so long ago that it was before the advent of hardware accelerated virtualization, so something like 2003, and initially this was para virtualized so that you needed some guests that were adapted. So you couldn't like run regular guests, but you had, because it was running b before the advent of hardware virtualization, um, running specially uh, like Linux kernel, think again, recompiling, they, they see recompiling Linux kernel with special support for para virtualization of not using interrupts directly and so on, running in user space in Xen back in the day in, in 2003. Nowadays, of course, they additionally support hardware virtualization, but the idea is not new. Other people have done it, of course, uh, in terms of virtualization only, but um, certainly this is how we could use it today. Um, and um, for why do I pr propose this? You could, of course, use Xen, but the problem as usual is so much code duplication and the code base is rather large, which is why um, I'm, instead of not going the way, this is what I meant in the beginning, you could always argue, but there are so many code bits and pieces, maybe just use them, there's even so many, uh, which was not what I wanted to, um, anyway. Um, all right, some more reviews. I was Gino, this was where I had the screenshot, so this is what I wanted. So like those Gino people, but you see who knows about Gino except we are even promoting this on, on our channel. This is why I think just mixing all the bits and pieces, everything you find together might not be the best way to, best way to go, um, especially with all the C code in there. And yeah, the question how much we do in C++ or Rust or any other languages we have to see. However, so I will definitely not use C because I certainly need to eat my own dog food here and can't say that C is insecure and use it and then use C. So we will definitely not use plain C. We will at least use C++ um, because we are just more familiar with this, but use abstractions so that we avoid, certainly we will not use string functions or mem copy functions. Um, and write everything we write in, in C++ or Rust, we will see. Maybe if we do Rust fully in Rust, we will see, but this, of course, Redux OS. Um, but there are reasons why I'm not the most thrilled with Rust, but that is for another video. Which language we use, you can forget for now. Uh, this is um, implementation defined, certainly, again, not vanilla, plain C. However, it doesn't matter that much because only, you see, the kernel mode is here drastically re reduced. We only have basic IPC standing for inter 
pr process communication, virtual memory scheduling. So there should be very, very, very little uh, of code. We maybe I even end up using L4 because why not use other people code um, L4 kernel and um, it's also not this Google for uh, for kernel get some freaking advertisement. Do they have few lines of code? Okay, log or logs is probably just some ten thousand lines of. Do they have this here somewhere lines of code? Um, during the something. Um, yeah, the fun fact even is are those ideas new? New? No, of course not. Even other people, so not only German universities, Australian uni universities, but even. Here they apparently apparently have a fully verified, allegedly anyway, high assurance software of fully formal verification, which certainly is amazing. But um, who knows about this, right? I know about this because I for decades do side project of always continuous integration, learning and development and research. I know such things and I don't even know everything, right? I just, it's just the this, this stuff that I continue to look into, but raise your hand. Who knew that there's some, I think Nikta maybe, um, uh, I think has some, yeah, even maybe uh, whatever. So yeah, maybe even allegedly um, full, um, full formal verified, but who knew about this, right? Um, very, you look, there is even Oscar, an OS written Haskell, targeted the L4 specification. Um, so yeah, other ideas new. And raise your hand, who is using this Nova OS virtualization architecture? Um, you don't even f necessarily yeah, micro hypervisor. So what we what we do, what I, what I plan suggest to do over the next years, yes, 20% project, maybe more. We will see. Is basically some like yeah, you could call it micro hypervisor, maybe. So some like nano kernel, um, HAL, then this micro um, kernel, micro kernel uh, hypervisor basically. Um, and uh, then this is why I say it doesn't really matter what language we use because we use it for in terms of this nano kernel and before you say a micro kernel in a nano kernel, nano kernel only means as a general term for a kernel that's not doing like much a very thin layer. You could even say DOS nano kernel. They might have even why is he macOS nano kernel? What do they? What the heck? Uh, what? Ah, oh, maybe they mean oh whatever. Um, can we also have not macOS here somewhere off? Uh, Wiki. Uh, of course not. Anyway, this means um, like basically only uh, definitions, like basically n only providing a very thin layer of. Um, oh, here's something. Jump to nano kernel. Here we have it finally. What, what, but why is this not? Really strange stuff of Wikipedia you get nowadays. Um, a very thin layer and basically only providing. API definitions or call services um, like for your platform, uh, like Sync Amiga or um, similar stuff. Really wondering. Anyway, so this this is only in our case. It's not like really a kernel. It's just this is why I would maybe we should actually put HAL in front so that people are not confusing this. Um, it's just a very thin layer of providing the platform definitions and what. I'm not yet 100% sure, um, but this is another video commercial viability of all this stuff. But um, also, I see comments in the audience. I go back to uh, that in a, in a moment. Um, commercial viability and outlook for that and, and so on. But um, I will also would want to create, continue to create this. So using our previous examples of low-level code to show people how to use uh, 3dfx voodoo uh, s3 verge um, and um, all the other uh, sound blast and other fun code stuff we have done here for dos and um, ideally i would continue to do this because so what i will continue to do is providing this example so that 
um, drafting it in a way that you can easily reuse fragments of this, like things the header files, for example, which is probably also why I maybe uh, use this more like embedded C++, uh, so that you can take, if you wanted to, like write a game or demo for uh, Voodoo or Matrox Pahelia or other people like ThinkP3, RSX, or we will for sure over the years continue with some serious fun on SGIs, uh, SGI machines, so that um, this can be shared with other bits and pieces or sync file system definitions so that when we with more readable enginess kind of help us create uh, documenting code of how the structure is of XFS, JFS, BetterFS and similar stuff like this that you can reuse this um, in, in from some headers um, in, in the project like my, my project um, Rosetta uh, code in, in terms of uh, from Rosetta Stone because I find this really I mean first of all all, all the bitrot right um, bitrot in good old fashioned XOR drivers like previously line hardware isolated stuff lines and Bresenham lines fills and stuff of uh, other previously good old working drivers in XOR and nowadays all bitrot and deleted this is really a shame which is why this whole thing will probably continue to be some a uh, readable Rosetta code kind of reference project um, regardless of what other additional service we create for that. Uh, last but not least, although this kernel is written in potentially in C++ or Rust, we will see, maybe we even do it in Rust, but the problem is with Rust having really this hardware abstraction layer kind of nano kernel stuff working on MIPS and PowerPC, I'm not really confident I want to fight with Rust and the syntax, and but this is for another video. It's probably better. So what this means in the uh, short term, um, you have seen previous videos, SGI o Octane or um, a tiny little bit O2, fighting with arc load, um, or even the old IBM server, um, RS6000, where I spent way too many days getting something booting with, with Yaboot and stuff. And they also see code duplication, right? Legacy grub, Grub2, certainly you could argue Grub2, and why do I do all the stuff? Certainly Grub2 relatively good in terms of, hey, it supports a lot of stuff, but again, code duplication, right? Um, and code duplication is basically Grub2. Um, the code is that large, it like basically is it's an own operating system. And the fun fact, uh, maybe even some people on Slashdot or uh, Twitter, recently said sooner or later every bootloader or um, or editor becomes <laughs> like Emacs right of Vim um, becomes an operating system and when we take a look how large Grub is in my opinion this is also um, hilarious and basically this the same code spent on Grub could already be a full operating system yeah, if you download mirror g Grub to whatever so that is, uh, how much is that? Compressed, yeah, so compressed um, six megabyte, but of course that's standard compressed. This will blow up easily to uh, 57 megabyte here apparently. So uh, honestly in 57 megabyte um, we would already, so in, in, this is already a full operating system, right? This is, is a little bit hilarious in my opinion. Um, so much code spent there, even USB drivers in there, there are a whole bunch of whatever drivers, maybe even part of a network stack. Anyway, um, so probably a another thing. So what this potentially, so last but not least, and um, probably I should also uh, check uh, all the many comments here, probably soon in the audience, which is also amazing that so many more people watch this. And again, uh, sorry for this um, ad hoc presentation style here. I hope you enjoyed. Anyway, if I spent here half an afternoon doing fancy PowerPoint like open office presentations and I cannot do other stuff. So um, bear with me and hope you share, like and subscribe. But anyway, and time spent, not spent on PowerPoint presentations is time spent I can spend on code. Um, so last but not least, all this uh, stuff can be in other languages, right? So even though this might be in C++ or Rust or whatever, all the services, you can write them even as seen. I've, I've disclosed this already, the new drivers in our exact scan, which probably you don't want to delay and try the most amazing exact scan software for macOS or stuff. Why is this graphic not loading um, today? The new drivers of this are um, 
written in Lua. Our legacy drivers are written in C++. So we have 500, uh, 500 plus drivers for basically all professional document scanners I ever touched, um, starting from 1998. And um, the new driver, so this is like approximately 450 drivers in our legacy C++ code base, and um, which also, yeah, experience, right? This this software, um, comp so XXCAM Pro compressed is 18 or so megabyte, uh, decompressed to, I don't know what else, whatever that might be. Um, 500 drivers, right? Many vendor software, they also see the craziness, right? You install some from Fujitsu, some popular document scanning stuff from Fujitsu, and it installs 500 freaking megabyte, right? Or the, the new might even install nearly a gigabyte. Um, I don't even know what they put in there, probably a lot of tutorial videos, but basically, yeah, 500 drivers in one infrastructure. And the new drivers, like approaching maybe 50 written in Lua, I disclosed this already previously, so this is certainly possible and a lot of people think of how many embedded people write drivers in Python and so on. Um, so theoretically you could, in my opinion, this is also instead of people writing like people in, at, in the, 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 the vendor drivers like previous videos, right? Buffer overflows in RGB lighting drivers and can't make this stuff up, right? It's a fact. Instead of people writing for the RGB lighting uh, drivers in, in C in your Windows and, and exposing new uh, security vulnerabilities there in your Windows kernel address space. Uh, write your freaking uh, temperature sensor control and RGB lighting drivers in Python or whatever you fancy. I would certainly prefer Lua, but that is for another day. And um, yeah, all the stuff doesn't necessarily need to be in C, right? So a lot of this stuff, um, fan control, uh, other, uh, all kinds of other stuff, um, just uh, just don't do it in C++, yeah, write it in Rust or Python and Perl and Java, whatever you want. Um, so with this in mind, we of course can do a lot of things and we certainly will use it for embedded, like our FPGA stuff, our RISC-V stuff. So um, continuing to create some project Rosetta code kind of product structure where we can pick and place stuff here from low level interrupt and similar abstraction for RISC-V PGA stuff, for real virtualization stuff on x86 servers, uh, PowerPC or Spark. So the, the way I will continue, of course, I will continue just what I like, feel like, what, I, what is fun. That means some Spark boot fun, some MIPS boot fun. Um, and also um, drafting some UI stuff in Linux, like we have done, Matrox Pehelia, uh, Silicon Motion, Link 3D, and tackle this from both sides. And certainly also write some applications because we have already um, here our universal stuff is already our own um, UI that um, not yet as amazing looking, but not C++ and no Rust. So this is, uh, I said this before, a full UI in, uh, in Lua for the testing of it. Probably I need to write some more amazing UI infrastructure, but that's probably also for another video. And um, yeah, like similar, just as I said a minute ago, this is also so crazy in the Linux kernel community that, for example, we I may probably mentioned this at least in some um, video that some people do a lot and it's not appreciated in bit rotting and stuff like all the Spark and PowerPC stuff bit rotting away there. And then here is also so crazy. This is IT87, right? This maintainer, um, I think some German, um, yeah, maybe a, a very, I thought this is some. Gunther, someone. Anyway, the, the one who maintains this in the Linux kernel, um, not updated in a decade, right? So even here, this hardware monitoring stuff, I would argue it should anyway, anyway be in user space, right? Some some fan control pin bit banging there, not the, the biggest uh, biggest deal. But it's not even updated anymore, right? So let's go here. So this this maintainer stepped down. I don't even quite understand why it never was updated. 
anymore and oh wait a second do we have here in commit in 2020 uh, where is uh, commit history um, the last time I checked yeah uh, wait a second why is here 2019 and Oh, this was a ah, replaced tree, tree white replaced GPL. Yeah, thank you very much. As I said, not updated. I, I don't understand this uh, anymore, right? So there were out of tree updates for this hardware monitoring stuff by uh, Günther Rock, Rock or Günther Rock. And 2017, I have here the last version carrying this around in T2 because I needed this for the previous AM4 motherboard. Where do I even too many? Um, too many anyway but um, yeah what this also means is this kind of structure is that a lot of drivers or all the drivers you can develop independently right um, not like here in 2020 where you constantly every second day need to update the Linux kernel because latest and greatest and you don't even know does it affect you also um, free act data before what fixes the deadlock in MMAP mode and it's like uh, what anyway this also means that you would get driver updates independently of all your kernel right and also more uh, even as Linux developer and user I really hate that I constantly comp keep comp compiling the kernel that in the meantime you need a freaking epic thread wrapping Ryzen 1350x for example to build your kernel in 10 minutes and certainly increasing and you build all the drivers that you never need like 10,000 of them those that are not bit rotten and deleted and mostly in this kind of setup in your nano and micro kernel layers there should rarely be a bug hopefully anyway at least after a decade of maturing and formal verification but all the other drivers like don't even need to update Linux kernel if it's only drivers that don't affect you, right? You would have drivers like packages in T2 or Gen 2 Debian, like network drivers and SCSI drivers, and only update those um, and with more stable APIs and ABIs like mapping memory and providing services. And last but not least, um, one thing I so certainly does this, oh, this also didn't result in some nice graphic here, by the way, some there's some anything oops anything usable here or not really uh, GNU tools kernel yeah X or yeah it's a little bit patchy whatnot yeah um, I saw here pulls audio right so this also means we will certainly have here um, nearly everything uh, in user space everything. Every drivers, everything in user space, and that means also the sound server, right? This is also a recurring theme here and, um, of much fun and laughter and go live here without audio because the pulse audio demon somehow sometimes disappears with all the heavy load of uh, three audio sources and uh, uh, a video feed or stuff and in the browser apparently too much for pulse audio to constantly keep running. And I said this before, um, I'm so long in Linux, it's not like I came here yesterday and do Linux since yesterday. No, I do it since 1998 or 1997-ish or something. Probably 1996. Um, I, probably 1996 and since 1998 I'm there with Rock Linux, contributing to Rock Linux, something like 1998. So back in the day, 1998-ish, um, 2000, with Alza advanced Linux sound architecture that was after open sound system, uh, when, when Alza brought all the amazing multi-track and, and whatever amazing features. We recorded, we had GSMP, we, we wrote GSMP, the General Sound Manipulation Program, we recorded multi-track 8, 8-channel eight multi-track, I still have the Delta 1010 here, um, and we not only wrote the software, GSMP, probably I tried another day to find a screenshot, but probably, by the way, maybe it still comes up with GSMP SFnet, it comes from not having your own stuff, here. Yeah, this, uh, this dynamic din din is like, thank you very much. But um, you could you do multi-track recording in 2000 is my point, um, and also uh, probably old stuff is it even me or some other stuff. And um, 
Yeah, now we have a um, new, over the decade, every two or three years, we have a new audio server and nothing really works anymore. And you could have exactly this audio server stuff in, similar to the Windows server, have your audio server, which certainly pulls audio, but some C++ or Rust or uh, similar amazing stuff, right? So we would have um, nano kernel, project resulta code, um, and we would have some kind of window, or maybe we call it graphic server. And um, certainly some file FS server, maybe we call it um, GPU server, uh, just to have a shorter FS server. We would have some network server, net server, and certainly some, some sound server and similar servers. And so what they do is they allocate the resources like the sound server with the sound drivers requesting PCI resources this would work like it works always in some micro kernel or in the Linux kernel, requesting resources, mapping, memory mapping, PCI, um, memory mapped IO windows, and um, writing the data in there. And what is also crazy here, so not only does Alza have some multi-channel stuff, multi-channel channel meaning if your modern sound card only has one PCM channel for one PCM input and output at a time, that if two applications like your browser and your OBS capture or your, your browser and your, your uh, audio player wants to play sound, it needs to be mixed. And um, good back in the day, this was either in kernel or in the lib alza support uh, libraries and it, it worked, right? So this worked. For what do we even need Pulse Audio when, well, we mostly needed to mix in Bluetooth, for example, because 90% of the users, unless you use Bluetooth, mixing multiple channels of audio was already a solved thing 20 years ago. And fun fact, 20 years ago, this, we had already had multi multimedia um, audio sound servers like ES, uh, ESD, Enlightenment Sound Demon, um, many others like Arts, uh, the, the advanced real-time something list of open source sound servers. And um, 23 audio, no. Um, Sound servers do we have here? I want actually a nice list like ESD. Um, Arts ESD, yeah, Jack. Jack was the low latency stuff for professional audio, pulse audio. There were plenty of more, just that also right now I don't remember all of them. Um, hey, there's even an open BSD audio MIDI framework, SNDIO, in case you never heard about that thing. Anyway, the, the limitations of pulse audio, I mean, first of all, for the most part, you didn't need this. The only thing is mixing in Bluetooth stuff and like dynamic configuration and discovery um, for Bluetooth mostly or USB devices. And then again, then do it once in um, your sound server, in your microkernel. And the other limitation I just recently discovered, except constantly crashing and disappearing here for, or not crashing, but voluntarily quitting because I didn't use it for five minutes and then it quits because, yeah, or whatever, fun stuff. And the one thing um, I would want to do it is, I said this recently, resurrecting our previous Rock Linux Naughty 2, like building his stuff, like, um, yeah, like whatever, it doesn't matter too much, let's build here on Pango just for the test. Um, and having his sound output, right? So like that it would say like building GNOME T or, or maybe even like like text to speech of having some Hollywood kind of YouTube background stuff. And so the only thing I wanted to use Pulse Audio for doesn't work. Main, uh, meaning two different user IDs. Like 2020, this Pulse Audio doesn't support to connect from two users. And um, so meaning that I have normally this is Pulse Audio is running as my Joe user, my, my Joe normal everyday user. And then the, the root user can't like, isn't supposed to connect to your Joe user's audio demons. Like how stupid is that, right? So this 20 years ago, this was working with Alza anyway, a multiple PCM stream outputs. And 2020 with the Pulse Audio freaking Pulse Audio demon can't even output as root user status notifications and as normal Joe user. Um, it's, uh, so to say, hilarious. Um, and yeah, I actually, there, Pulse Audio has some, like, run a system something, but I think um, this also was somehow um, 
not like it probably didn't do what I wanted um, like system wide but it, I think it wasn't I run a system wide instance but yeah system boo but somehow this also might wasn't recommended didn't do what I wanted or it had other strange side effects I don't even quite understand anymore uh, what this was but of course um, you you see it's t talking about Bluetooth it increasingly becomes complex um, in terms of all the integration it starts always simple have some graphics have some keyboard mouse IO have some network IO have some block IO and that's mostly already it but of course with the modern modern day complexity there's some Bluetooth there's some uh, USB certainly and um, IP4 six and so on stuff gets uh, then quickly out of hand um, but the good thing is we could even like use in user space copy and paste some IP TCP IP stack um, bits and pieces from Linux or OpenBSD or wherever and run them here I have not yet made my mind how fine grained I would want to divide this servers um, these are the design choices um, certainly when people um, always uh, say perf but performance 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 I have not yet made my mind how fine grained I want to do this because theoretically you could uh, even have some IPv4 and IPv6 server but this probably will not scale very much um, so most likely this will actually be here just one um, network server there so so much to that so you can make it totally fine-grained but that probably will not scale the most amazing and the way hurt handles this for example file systems hurt had something called translators in hurt that would do um hurdle no translators hurt um gnu for managing file systems so uh, name server that provides RPC interactions server that additional attaches to this file system node and so because what we certainly had will have is certainly we want as much as possible in file in, in user space for stability and maintenance similar to also the Linux kernel certainly sometimes go into this direction of this fuse file system and user space you see how it even adds new features right so it's not only security stuff but even Linux people want it for features um, and they are certainly yes there will be performance questions and implementation details which is also they trick around nowadays they, they optimize and performance trickery hack the heck out of views in Linux but we will certainly have all of this stuff like um, XFS uh, X to whatever um, better if as and whatnot here in user space and the problem is the question is always um, how if you have different processes so what what I'm talking about is whether we want one process for each thing meaning that you have an an X2 process here certainly we, we, we will have a uh, as we have, right now we have an X process we will have a graphic server process uh, we will have a network process and so on um, depending on how high performance we want um, for example in terms of file system you could have for each storage you have one process but that also doesn't scale the most meaning here NVMe uh, processes um, AHC, uh, AHC uh, control uh, interface HCI D is like yeah can all like D for demon whatever doesn't matter too much uh, like USB whatever USB, USB attached SCSI something um, we will see where we go with it because the other problem is we will also have some block multiplexer stuff like LVM2 and uh, loops and stuff and uh, so on and I was thinking about this already for quite some days and nights already and certainly we can make each bit in this layers one process that has some IPC but this will be dock slow so yeah no illusions there we will not magically um, make this whatever uh, magically perform so I'm thinking maybe um, what do we have here GNU FS so yeah here's like FS server so maybe for performance optimization 
um, it would make maybe sense to have all the storage in one storage process, meaning that um, this will be shared libraries for handling um, LVM2 so that the file system server loads additional plugins handling stuff so that you don't have IPC um, and before you throw yeah but you promised us security and whatnot I said yeah it's still more secure of having your um, where do I have this graphic changed and I answer the questions in the audience now in finally a minute so we will still have all the stuff separated so we will have still um, multiple device drivers we will have you see file server so most likely it will be similar to this file server here um, handling most of the stuff and again if you already want your code running in a good old-fashioned classic unix with a single address space and everything crammed in one address space then having just your storage stuff in uh, one storage server for handling uh, crypto and logical volume stuff is still better than every, having everything like of your 10,000 components in um, your one single address space. So yeah, certainly you see I thought about this already a little bit. Um, that also means that the sound server or the, the GPU server will have a similar loadable plug-in setup like accelerated graphic stuff for uh, NVIDIA and AMD for running this in this GPU server similar to Xorg for this performance reasons because certainly we want a snappy system and um, not uh, a totally unusable like not making it 100 times slower we will only hopefully 10% uh, or something depending on what the latest spectre and meltdown mitigation stuff is um, however it doesn't stop you from having two GPU servers right so you if you have two graphic cards you could run two GPU servers uh, one GPU server for each graphic card if you wanted to for or not it, optional right depending on if you want one large expanded um, layer but this setup will be similar to Xorg and this graphic GPU server stuff it will probably not be network transparent so it probably will be like Wayland like modern or more modern as Wayland meaning more client side mapped DMA buffers or something for really snappy like sync macOS and Windows 10 uh, compo so the desktop performance doing it microkernel doesn't mean it's slow or whatever it's like no it can in many instances be even significantly faster than at least Xorg and for 3D stuff we will see um, but yeah this is at least the conceptual summary and the good thing is having all of the stuff in user space we can um, start from both ends as I said already earlier in this video prototype stuff and there you see prototype stuff right amazing portable development prototype user, user space stuff um, and maybe I even of all the um, of all the bits and pieces maybe because arc load gets on my nerves I'm not really like there you see is my time best spent on grub 2 or on innovating stuff and certainly as much as already did in the open source community for 20 years I also eventually want to get back to do some really state-of-the-art development and research and instead of spending my time on testing and debugging grub2 on spark or grub2 on arcs mips um, maybe we actually start with some HAL nano kernel for mips um, because uh, our octane right and arc load gets on our nerves. I spent already multiple days debugging init RD loading in arc load and I'm at the point where I don't really feel like uh, debugging others people up and then bootloader anymore and rather let's better do some modern code um, because it right now is half broken anyway and test it there. Also yeah risk 5 FPGA low level um, firmware code there and uh, like file system loading and stuff so that in the future when we do something for risk 5 reuse our project rosetta code structure for like i square c defines for f for fat file system defines what we would otherwise also use in our more full-grown uh, microkernel and um, this will be an interesting project i only wanted to provide some more thoughts here some more in-depth stuff and um, that is something that we step by step um, 
will work on. I'm not yet sure also commercial viability, maybe later today or maybe tomorrow we can make another hour session of discussing commercial viability of even doing this at all and what the chances, odds and chances are. Um, let's take a final look at the um, comments here, um, uh, which are quite some. And still also, it's zero drop frames for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So welcome everyone, Glaucus, everyone else. Uh, amazing that you are here. Thanks that you tuned in. Um, Carlos writes, will I build an operating system? Yeah, I talked this already. It's not the first thing. I, I said this already many times along the lines. And um, each time I see Linux kernel um, update here, we can even go to the diff. Um, oh, not this diff, but um, that patch. And oh, don't download it. Because I'm really curious. I can't even update the kernels as fast anymore as they release them here. And um, because what do we have? Five, eight. So this is uh, nine. Yeah. So this is four days, two days, six days, or something. It's like yeah, recurring theme. And this is also some benefit of the structure of just updating some device driver and having uh, extremely little in um, little code, trusted code base in the microkernel. Of course, even Google works on this. Am I, I said this before, am I, are we the first ones? Of course not. All the other microkernels, Mach L4, um, Helen OS, and um, also Google Fuchsia. I took a look, did it build, but doesn't really work. Fuchsia, uh, maybe we make another video, but um, yeah, it doesn't really do something for me, at least in x86 build um, and the emulator. Or uh, last but not least, the latest Huawei. Um, Harmony, which apparently they just announced this day, it's not Vapor, where there is some stuff coming allegedly, um, shifts their phones to Harmony operating system to, to the end of 2021. I'm a little bit triggered by that. It's like if we would have infinite time and money, it's like let's beat Huawei to their microkernel game and have something before them. Maybe we have, maybe I should actually hurry and like prototype something together with some graphic server and stuff just to beat Huawei in their own many OS game, um, but yeah, also release early and release often certainly Huawei so far only marketing talks and doesn't show us any code, but um, yeah, uh, also we made previous videos already of crazy microkernel ideas and um, why don't you make a series of, so yeah, questions on why don't we make a series of building operating system? Yeah, I mean, ki kind of, we do this already. The only problem is that I certainly realized that the AAA videos of battery chargers have 10,000 of more views than microkernel, which is also why I was holding off giving some new summary of drafting, of, of conceptual drafting update and talk and benefits and so on here, which is also, yeah, we need to see also, as you see, uh, just sitting in a corner in your basement, in your bunker, in your attic or wherever um, is more usually at least for me more efficient to work on uh, than entertaining here on YouTube. But anyway, we try to do this, which is probably some concept conceptual update is better or some like yeah, there you see also for each week. This is a problem with I had this. I saw the big YouTubers and thought, hey, if we do here some daily code stuff, maybe we can get a million subscribers and certainly already nearly 6000 people subscribe, which is certainly amazing, um, but certainly slower than I hope. But the problem is also it's time spent on code, like you, you code maybe one week for one feature or something, and then it's like one YouTube video. So yeah, maybe we get there, but nah, a little harder way than I hoped it would be. But certainly we will try to keep both things going. This also means more videos. I made these videos already writing low level drivers. There will be videos, low level booting on ARM, low level booting on PowerPC as we um, go here through the different parts of our operating system stack. But this also means doing more UI. I actually, with our UI stuff, so not only uh, do I have here uh, this running on my own UI stuff, um, and this is also what we can use more in our daily business. And that is also the problem, right? Selling each application is easier than, um, oops, 
than selling an operating system. It's certainly, and this is also the next thing, how open source should it be and how much should we sell it to? Because if, if we would have like a million funding, then we could certainly write one of, uh, like think Mozilla's Firefox funding with hundreds of millions, we could certainly create the most amazing BOS kind of, yes, there is Haiku, but yeah, um, Qnix kind of operating system. And um, yeah, even a small editor here. So also um, let's uh, edit here something I just recently also. Um, let's edit the editor. And uh, yeah, I even have <laughs> how many editors I've even written already in editor. So um, I have actually here probably 30. I even have a freaking full VNC client from scratch in just 100 lines of code, because as you see, this is Lua. And so this also means probably also yeah, I actually wanted to make the scrubber also nice another day. But you see, this is already um, pretty nice and, and, and snappier than <laughs> it's written in Lua and kind of snappier and cooler to write than, and yeah, how cool to write is it? Um, UI code probably for another video like window function window layout of, um, yes, that's how we do UI code in 2020, which also probably we want to fully 3D accelerate that and have fun stuff. But yeah, so maybe a full amazing code editor coming soon. All the stuff you need to write to test your own UI stuff. But yeah, a lot of stuff to do. Um, let's see what else did I miss in the comments. Um, I always digress a little bit when I answer this. Um, so yeah, a series of UI stuff and application and bootloader and low level stuff. Um, and um, so yeah, Stefan Paletta was only for the runs. I not sure, probably not the most uh, runs today. Um, lots of new NVIDIA binary blob into the BIOS, no mercy. Uh, Windows entire blob, NetBSD, I heard NetBSD great for obstructing the API, making it portable, new architecture, maybe take a look at. Um, well, NetBSD is just old fashioned Unix code, right? So like NetBSD, OpenBSD, um, it's um, mostly kept it to the bare minimum. It's also NetBSD often more readable, um, but it's still C code of and, and um, monolithic one address based kernel, which yeah, we could probably cop copy and paste um, some stuff. Um, but yeah, it's still as far right looker wrote there, no micro and nano kernel. And uh, this is why, yeah, this is why I want to, certainly some people do do something like L4, uh, Gnode also, again, recurring theme here, I have the feeling. Leave in the comments below also, this probably triggers the Gnode developers, wherever the uh, Gnode uh, stuff is now. From here of all the other, um, you get the idea. Again, Gnode people have the feeling they throw everything into, uh, into one kitchen thing, and this is not really something I want to repeat here. And this is also um, why I want to contribute to more modern research, not always repeating the same, not writing yet another uh, Unix concept compatible um, stuff in C for the fifth time, which is, yeah. Then, um, Just right, um, and also Glaucus writes, true, the, the user space is, for you mean the user space, uh, insanely portable. Um, also, this is also the whole um, user space, so probably the, um, the user space, of course, uh, like drives everything in user space and, and like the user space apps, like command line apps also not in freaking C, meaning, yes, I know Rust is the latest and greatest, I have my reservations, um, probably also not in uh, C. So most likely, um, as I said in the previous video uh, from last year, I'm dreaming of my own just uh, uh, JIT kind of maybe C++, C5, um, Lua or something, um, we may call it E mostly because R is already taken, although E is also tiny little bit taken, but let's call it maybe E anyway. Um, because why do I have this crazy idea? Because we can't have 
enough crazy ideas. So user space, we certainly can write Lua. User space, we, we mean stuff like um, CP, RM. These programs like CP, RM, they do not much. Um, RM for remove, it's just using syscall um, unlink, right? So this would be whatever unlink here. Is it even hopefully maybe visible? So this user space stuff is not doing much here with the name of arc whatever. Of course, with a little bit error handling and um, or cut and stuff. So cut is just open um, and, and read and write and stuff. And this doesn't even, well, shouldn't be in C anyway with our yeah, C2 insecure. We will also make videos why, why C is too insecure and how it could have been better and stuff. So we could just use C++ or Rust. Um, maybe we even, again, we could mix and match every, anything. But I would think the, the Java root of why always recompile this stuff. Again, um, we can even copy this in here, right? This stuff is, a lot of user space stuff is just doing... Um, like open, read, uh, write, select, um, uh, compute, whatever, like dd, uh, copy, uh, rename, unlink, um, remove, uh, zimlink, and some most of the stuff, or even the shell. And this JIT dream I had in, in last year's video already. And the issue with this is also that, as seen as in the recent AVX, Intel AVX video, all the processors over the years had increasingly performance instructions like SSE, uh, AVX, um, on the MIPS and RISC-V and, and Spark side like visual instruction set and even on MIPS, the new MIPS and Spark processors have even extensions for um, jumps and branch and calls without delay slot for example. And fun fact, I said this in the previous Linus Torvalds agrees that AVX should die a quick and painful death. Um, a lot of this stuff is not even used because all of this stuff usually, even on my own system, is compiled for... Um, also, yeah, this is an ASCII file because... Yeah. And so I said this already, um, maybe we should just um, JIT this better um, and this means writing this stuff in uh, maybe some higher level languages. The problem with Rust is Rust is again not... Um, like jitted and we could of course just use like Lua JIT but this code is a little bit unportable and hard to read also high performance. Um, we could use Java but Java is such a huge runtime and uh, patent encumbered of Oracle's uh, fun stuff and so on. So and I anyway want this is project Rosetta code. Um, I have already continued with this. Uh, small and beautiful just-in-time compilation stuff. And the Linux kernel is supporting this anyway with Sync BPF, this Berkeley packet filter, um, portable JIT code for firewalling stuff. And uh, why not build a whole system? So maybe this ends up as nano kernel in C++ or Rust and a lot of stuff in um, Lua, like like Python readable, like Lua, like readable, um, readable code. Of course, we could do old-fashioned C++ Rust Perl, Python, whatever. We could also just use Java, but whatever. Anyway, so we will continue cool, interesting ideas. And because what this allows us would be to uh, dynamically support, generate code for um, supporting higher performance stuff, even on MIPS and Spark, like branches without delay slot, um, new single instruction multiple data, AVX or not, so that, um, and uh, for example, even a just-in-time compiled shell or something for really truly, and there you see, stuff could easily become so much more high performance with, with a much more um, advanced user space, um, like sync all the slow configure files um, of good old-fashioned shell code, shell code being evaluated there, um, that, um, yeah, with, with much more modern stuff, like dynamically supporting single instruction multiple data, auto vectorization or stuff, um, maybe this could be much more amazing. Certainly in this kind of setup, we will not have something like systemd, so no worries there. But um, yeah, we will see how this will be going. And the good thing is all this, before you think we are crazy, actually the, the crazy thing is a lot of this stuff, for example, this JIT stuff, 
Uh, right now, our own uh, UI stuff we run in just Lua because the Lua, Lua as amazing Lua JIT is, Lua, Lua just in time compiler stuff, it is super high performance. Like it, and how amazing can this stuff be? It in times here you see 143, 134 times faster than um, interpreted Lua, obviously. So, this is similar to uh, Java script um, or yeah, 112 times faster. Um, then interpreted Lua JIT. And in some benchmarks, this rivals um, tightly optimized C code, right? It's only, I wish I could use it, but it doesn't support like all architectures and the code is a little bit um, hard to follow. And the author also deprecated this a little bit. So yeah, um, anyway, the irony is, in, if before you call me crazy um, and out of my mind, The, the funny thing is, for example, this here we could use the most, right? So in terms of our own Lua version in the meantime here, um, our new, like our old stuff is native macOS, which maybe a little bit deprecated. Our new stuff, a whole runtime, our own run UI runtime in Lua, amazing results. Uh, wouldn't want to write code in anything else anymore because it's amazing. So ironically, this why I even spend time on this JIT stuff is because, hey, 20% extra code product. This is actually all our Windows users asking for, can we have more performance? Like, yeah, maybe we should JIT our own freaking um, um, lure um, fork. Um, so much to, yeah, this crazy idea, actually the one we need most. This UI stuff here in the, in the middle, user space uh, UI stuff is like, yeah, I'm not, certainly not in 2010, 20 writing native Windows. Um, because yeah, Windows APIs, why do we have our own UI? Because Windows API is not amazing. I'm not going to use Qt because previous video half a gigabyte code base of, um, yeah, certainly not writing this in C++. Um, dynamic language, dynamic, dynamically typed language, amazing results, um, most amazing UI code we have ever written. Can't recommend it more. So the irony is, as much as people always want an operating system, the most profitable of usable on our own stuff, our own uh, graphic stuff and JIT code potentially, which you see some um, cross benefits here of our own stuff. And um, yeah, this is also, as much as I've seen the results there, um, I wouldn't want something else. And this also means JIT stuff of um, Lua or E, If you have, as I have, have here open read write stuff, um, no buffer over under runs in, in dynamic type safe uh, buffer address space string safe languages um, or Rust. And um, the benefit of all of this user space stuff like sync, why does make file system need to be C? Why um, it, it's not even high performance code, right? Um, Why does uh, other like ping and stuff, why does it need to be C? You don't need to have ping or trace root or um, BC or SED or um, ARC and all the other stuff written in C. Um, some of the stuff can easily be um, higher performance anyway, like sync dynamically compiling um, SED and GNU ORC regular expressions and stuff too tightly. Um, tight native machine code here on the fly because anyway um, so probably I shouldn't digress but this is probably maybe that this whole thing is not as crazy as it sounds um, comments, more comments to the audience do I still use T2 yes of course this is running T2 we will continue to run T2 and certainly I, I wouldn't want to run anything else and we will of course um, probably even use T2 for that um, also not really sure, um, yeah, given that we want to rewrite everything because no legacy code, but theoretically we could even use T2 to build stuff as our own kernel. Um, maybe I even get bored after a year and we end up using L4 based hurt anyway or Haiku or whatnot, which fun facts theoretically there is a the code. If you're interested in all this stuff, you can also send patches to integrate Minix, OpenBSD, Haiku, stuff in T2 or something of that sort. But yeah, until I have my own um, micro, mighty server microkernel system, of course I use T2 Linux. Um, Mr. Bonk is back, still live. Uh, happy to hear. Welcome back. 
uh, far right lurker writes in Windows has a micro kernel still sucks in, in insecure. Yeah, this is a problem. This is a problem with vintage and legacy code. Um, and like loading your RGB lighting and fan control driver in your microkernel and also um, Microsoft at one point. Windows 10 is of course better, but at one point, like Windows NT3 in the 90s was more microkernel with the graphic server in user space, similar to how we want to do it here. And then they moved the graphic for performance because certainly 1995 or six or something was calling and uh, they moved this graphic server back into uh, the main kernel because performance and they even had their tr at some point true type font parsing in the kernel all the stuff nobody should put into the kernel so yeah it's not uh, windows is not amazing for sure and also mac os is barely using this right so mac os has uh, basically I, i've never really investigated how many Mach kernels because they basically have a Mach microkernel similar to fun fact GNU heard of all microkernels and have here this GNU, GNU um, Unix server and um, I probably should another day maybe investigate how many Mach, ta Mach ta tasks they have really running there but um, The easier to work with IO and assembly, um, writes Mr. Bunk. I, I don't really agree. For me, it's easier to work in C, even in Lua. You probably, in my opinion, you don't even. I mean, what is if you have some IO of you, even in Lua or in C, you have your memory mapped IO stuff. And also, if, um, if you have some struct like um, sync um, uh, lets for. XF impact driver um, just for some uh, what is it XF 68 video of all fun names something of maybe there are some nice definitions also yeah there you see this impact definitions certainly in the SGI bootloader then in um, the Linux kernel and again in the XORG driver of all stuff so um, I don't really quite understand here here's a register so impact registers so silicon graphics impact so um, not the most amazing but at least I knew what I will be getting here so not really sure why you say working with arbitrary structures here of registers is easier with some um, our own SVN uh, I think I have it as kernel trunk probably um, of all the S3 Verge header stuff, also probably not yet, not, not clear to me why some nice symbolic enums and memory mapped IO descriptions um, similar to this sort are not more readable in a high level language. This anyway, but um, yeah. Mr. Bungs also writes Emacs is literally in OS. Yeah, this is what I was also joking already. William Leslie writes. Thing is, multi boot is really nice. Um, you mean multi boot as in loading? Uh, do you mean this multi boot loader structure of GNU Grub, maybe of GNU Hertzing? But yeah, very theoretically, of course, this uh, setup here, as I outline, uh, outlined for cubes, theoretically, we could even KVM style. Of course, this works also for virtualization, having here your. Um, your um, nano microkernel stuff providing KVM like hardware virtualized resources similar to KVM of saying hey give me this hardware virtualized thing and um, process and then run this process in terms of uh, virtual machine address space and uh, running Linux and Windows here in processes and then having some cubes like setup um, with hopefully even less complexity than potentially this Xen based stuff is uh, imposing um, but uh, yeah probably I should finally go through some comments um, I yeah I've, I've Mr. Bong's ask um, so more comments like you have to think about on herd which files you need to statically what like you have to think about 
on heard which size file systems you need to statically link. Not sure what you. I mean, was it Mr. Wong says the programming language is in the problem? It's a problem. Is well, I also disagree a little bit with that. I think the programming language is the problem if, after so many years, as recently seen here on this channel, the best of the industry working on the Linux kernel still have here. Um, oops, not target show. Um, like use after free, yeah, yeah, like manually, manually allocate allocation management stuff, use after free, double, double uh, free, um, even buffer over underruns. I would argue certainly programmers also, but you see it is extremely hard when um, even keyboard here, key code in the Linux kernel of yeah, 20, 30 years in the making, um, the best of the industry still have signed integer overflows like, yeah, you can't only say all the pr it's all the programmers fault because apparently all the programmers, even the best of the industry for 30 years, cannot write secure code, then certainly the language is also a problem. And uh, I will make also a dedicated video about that sometime soon. Um, the 10 most, yeah, maybe even programming 101, which some people ask for, but, um, but also um, maybe there should have been already after the early days in the 70s, maybe in the 80s, but there you see, it industry, it's an industry-wide problem and stuff should have been more sane from the beginning. Instead of like 40 years with C, there should have been, sure, there is like C89 and C90 and C2000, whatever, and C++. And um, certainly C++ was better in many ways. Maybe they should have cut more old stuff like pointer arithmetic in C++ to make it an even safer language back in the day. Or there should have been a, a C version, like an improved C, like let's say a, a, a hypothetical C90, where they would have removed some most tricky stuff that you like implement, yeah, or uh, deprecating some stuff, point arithmetic, making making it a little bit more safe. Um, but yeah, more to this in another video, because if after 30 years in the world's most accessible and most used from all access points, virtual servers and Android phones use Linux kernel. We still have keyboard signed overflow in chaos key stuff then. Um, certainly the, it's not only the programmers, um, it's we must admit that we can't write everything in assembler in C and we need a little bit more um, stable and secure languages. Mr. Bongs also asked, have I heard of what forward comp? Yes, I heard about this, similar to Risk Five, but it's of course virtual from this Eigna or what is this? Eigna forward com of uh, x86 um, forward com uh, six block there. Eigna, 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 maybe no, not this. Whatever is. Agna, maybe, um, probably, maybe this, not sure, maybe, apparently this, um, I think it's this. Certainly I hate, heard about this, but um, given that, oh, this is Tor, what, is it even? Mm, anyway, heard about this, but it will not go much um, because everyone is working with, with Risk Five. He, if he would have done this, um, decades ago before risk 5 took off now um, it, it will re remain a virtual thing like mix or what it is from donald knut in case you heard about um is it m, m what is it? mmx or or mix yeah mmix of um pronounced m mix m mix mm. 64 bit reduced instruction set for designed by donald for educational purposes, in case you were wondering that was a thing. But um, so thought about CPU variable length vectors. Yeah, the, um, variable length vectors. We talked about this some um, videos ago. In in the at least shortly in the AVX 512 should die a painful death of Linus Torvalds weekly run of AVX something here in this video. Uh, we shortly talked about that was also Kansas advertisement. No, anyway, well, gets the idea. 
But so yeah, variable links vector is much better than this hard-coded single instruction multiple data. Um, more comments, uh, scrolling faster than I can read them, probably I should comment them much faster than I do. Um, microkernel rambling about turn from microkernel to rambling about sound, what server doesn't support. Um, concurrent user, ramp is a great place to grab drivers from. NetBSD, yeah, so this, this is the thing in user space we can, even if we make this, if we want to get rich and like billionaire like Bill Gates or something and, and Tim Apple, um, then it makes us proprietary because it will be the best kernel in the world has ever seen or something, we could still grab, which uh, was also a joke, we could still mix and match drivers because they are running in user space uh, anyway, so could even theoretically grab drivers as we need them from, like grab and rewrite them in, in C++ or Rust or something from NetBSD or Lua. Um, and um, yeah, people, thanks for the videos. Uh, happy to hear that. Old school prefers a microkernel design. So people ask what type of microkernel is used by Harmony OS. Nobody knows. So far it's mostly vaporware. There are some rumors that the Helen OS developer um, is working um, for Huawei. So that would be is it some Czech or something? Um, also offers also. So anyway, I think the main developer of Helenoise, which is also another um, um, microkernel thing. So author that would be maybe Carlos, maybe uh, not sure. But anyway, so maybe maybe not. Um, in case you were wondering, but I don't know. So far, there's very little known. Um, and uh, yeah, is a concurrent language. Yeah, I know that E existed, but I thought it was mostly dead. Let's check with Wikipedia. There's nothing, nothing like reusing stuff. In 1997, of um, security really computing something, but I think it is. Probably website, does it even still exist? Source disabilities, uh, E-Rights, E-Language. Anyway, we can also use some other. Anyway, it is probably mostly not used anymore, so whatever. Something, but yeah, I'm certainly aware of that, but something not as used as R or RR. So, um, so yeah, Harmony OS, uh, Harmony OS, yeah, maybe it's mostly from scratch, influenced by Helen OS, uh, Helen OS or something. Um, the big gem writes, would be better not to commit to one language, C++, if I Lua, but allow any language. Yeah, so certainly we would allow any languages. It's just like maybe we make it our own main language because I want more, like I want more portable yet high performance um, stuff and also like, um, it's getting a little bit boring to me how large LVM, Clang and GCC code bases become. So um, certainly these languages are rather complex, but certainly this will allow other languages like allowing some API to load whatever you generate of binary data and run it. Um, just like maybe we make our primary design um, uh, something of that sort. Um, again, this uh, also why I don't, why I personally not the most in love with Rust. Another video and stuff. But one thing is, in terms of this project Rosetta code of having like reusable defines at least in form of header code um, and maybe some other stuff. This will anyway um, like C C plus plus headers. Um, and maybe we need to make it in a way so that we can reuse this directly in our uh, C++ified Lua or something because of that speaking like like uh, fat.h um, of like x86 defines like a page table you know uh, or um, or other like um, NVIDIA 
uh, div defines and stuff so that this can be shared with other projects um, and potentially even uh, user space stuff not only using this in Linux but like with our RSX driver not going not willing to spend that much time with RSX stuff on the P3 probably I make it work a little bit better but maybe not fully at least on that maybe it would be more beneficial to write already in NVIDIA NVIDIA and like because it's broken anyway why should I always spend my lifetime fixing stuff like on the Apple G4 cube in Linux where um, hardware acceleration is broken since probably soon a decade I occasionally every other, other, other year retest if it works but it's still broken fun fact um, I got an Yeah, too many cards. I got a Sun XVR 100 of Radeon 7500 or something for the Sun Blade for DVI digital video out uh, the other week and um, lo and behold not only did I had to, to fix uh, um, not making this up first it, it oops of course because if you if you boot something on Linux that only we use of course it oops because C programming and then um, I patched this also quickly to not oops anymore but it's still at least I have a frame buffer so if you have this Radeon card in a Sun Spark it oopses because nah, DRM and stuff um, and if you use this patch here of ours Radeon um, Spark uh, where is this patch though okay, let's click on that let's go to the SCN listing and or did I not commit this did I not uh, maybe I didn't commit this let's check um, here package base Linux. Ah, I didn't commit this apparently. Huh. Only live here on this video, just committing some Linux stuff. Ah, my typing today. Too much diaper change and babies. That, uh, fingers are so. Um, this is in some Radeon BIOS, so it the DRM driver here. You see. GPU DRM Radeon um, on, on probably everything not x86 or power PC or something um, oops is here in um, trying to map the BIOS um, so probably if, yeah whatever, whatever so we just I just quickly patched this to not trying to read the BIOS which works if you don't have fancy connector mappings there for Atom BIOS stuff so um, patched uh, or hot fixed Linux to not Linux uh, GPU DRM Radeon to not oops on Spark because it is so uh, recurring theme that is so single address space monolithic kernel lish right uh, commits this fun stuff because ah uh, darn uh, little mistake of yeah uh, commits this together with QLA so much to I uh, should have reviewed this better anyway this happens when you do this live in the middle of live stream but um, anyway um, old school right C is best ability to be optimized um, this, this is not really true because um, C is so if C is just a glorified assembler front front end and it is so low level it doesn't even optimize and in my opinion so not only is a lot of highly optimized stuff written in other stuff like C or um, also new rust stuff um, performance like a, maybe even AV1 codec of achieves another speed up over whatever so um, C is very low level of dealing with bits and bytes so that it doesn't, doesn't even optimize very well and I really wonder in my, in my opinion another um, with some more scientific background um, let's do some math vector Wikipedia something um, I really also wonder why we do not write why after so many um, like um, years uh, why we still um, not write a code more like um, like real math code so that you um, don't open code it like for each in, in, integer in m size of whatever array but like really um, this potentially certainly there, there were attempts of this like symbolic whatever symbolic math languages were but 
Um, this probably, in my opinion, should probably be more how we. But they also see how stuck we are. How stuck after after so many decades of, of 50 years of um, computer science and um, information technology, we still write with bits and pieces, manual casting and fiddling with each bit and byte in, in memory, instead of uh, writing here um, more human readable and more abstract expressions and having the compiler generate the code um, for that. But yeah, so a lot of high level code, especially if you get into this, um, think of single structure, multiple, multiple data, it, C code doesn't, due to the nature of the low level bits and bytes code of C, it doesn't optimize very well, this is the myth. A lot of high level code optimizes way, way better, um, especially the more symbolic abstract you write it, the better it usually optimize, um, and then the compiler, compilers for this kind of stuff um, can much can generate much more automatically vectorized and matching code. Um, when you just look in, in the horrible code that auto vectorizing C compiler generate for just simple uh, vector math processing video code and how much in even in this day and age programmers still need to um, what was it? Let, let just recently, AV1, um, AVX, or something. Um, it's like, yeah, still, um, yeah, manually adding, allegedly, apparently, yeah, and so far, zero job friends, amazing stuff. Um, is this a link externally? Yeah, here. So, yeah, 2020, um, we still, there is even the, do we have some nice change set? Uh, HHV something, MCT. Uh, Per previous version, what do we have here? Pre eight, um, yeah, we, we still manually fill around here with um, even apparently assembly code. Of can we also get the where would be clicking for and copy file pass of where would be the show latest version? Maybe that, um, or does it even look like? Um, uh, what, what, whatever, you probably find it as readable as uh, or even process stuff. Anyway, yeah, 2020, we still hand optimize uh, video codec stuff instead of some more. But also, this is in some degree previous videos the failure of Intel kind of as single instruction multiple data extensions like AVX um, and so on that it's. Um, probably should be variable length vector extension as mentioned in the previous video um, and more express on a higher level in more math formula kind of stuff of um, compilers generating like writing video in in the specification video stuff usually is probably written in, in similar uh, formulas anyway and yeah but yeah anyway this, this is in my opinion um, I probably should create a meme thing here of uh, uh, yeah I recently saw um, Russian Lada meme of um, yeah here uh, something of that sort of uh, no pun intended and hope it doesn't trigger one but probably I should create a meme here of uh, C perfect perfect from the beginning right C and then yeah like uh, C plus plus Rust Ada um, Per Python, <laughs> Ruby, Rust, it's like, yeah, but C perfect from the beginning, it's like, yeah, um, probably um, creating memes here live on this channel. Um, anyway, um, old school writes high performance and Lua both in the same sentence. Yeah, just look in how high performance Lua JIT is. It's uh, even generating single instruction multiple data code that rivals highly optimized C code in some scenarios um, and stuff. Let's see when considered it is high performance when considered interpreted. I'm, I'm talking about just in time compiling stuff here. So uh, what else do we have? Um, Navar writes all used Lua for when needed absolute tiny interpreter for embedded. 
a lot of people use this, right? It's used, no, it's loose everywhere. It's um, uh, the everything in the kitchen thing for the game industry. It's lure used games and Adobe Lightroom. Let's see if Google finds us some nice list uh, showcases here. This is so um, it's not. This is not really. what I wanted, but Lightroom, yeah, Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Angry Birds, Apache, HTTP server, something, whatever, but basically nearly every game in the meantime has it, and um, Adobe Lightroom allegedly is also um, nearly mostly written, and our own runtime library stuff, which probably maybe I should send it in there to be listed there, um, probably need to make it even more amazing looking, um, it's already amazingly nicely programmed on the stuff, and um, we have so more stuff. Um, what if we made a version of C that is JIT compiled? Yeah, actually, I'm with all the stuff. I will probably actually I, I just started already this uh, JIT at C, um, but uh, that was a little bit near. So this stuff, this this JIT stuff, I will have a, a low level JIT stuff, a low level code generation stuff for the main architectures and multiple front ends um, and. Maybe I try to make something C, mostly maybe maybe C without the most crazy stuff that like 95% of the more normal stuff can run or something. Um, we will see. Certainly, you want to share, like, and subscribe to support us. And also, recurring theme it's already amazing how many people um, um, subscribe to Patreon for some monthly donation, donations that certainly would be. Are highly appreciated, especially considering not only we have to do all this stuff, I also want at least make the PS3 RSX a tiny little bit nicer and um, and um, certainly the ongoing T2 work, but also uh, Power VR. So all the long-term projects or is coming sometime soon, reversing a little bit Power VR because somehow not really sure why not, not too many people have, have to make. Also, maybe maybe reversing power VR will be a nightmare and a headache, which might be why not so much came out of it so far. But anyway, and also we need to have a USB Epiphone video capture dongle thing. Um, so more stuff I probably should. Where do we? Uh, it has a developer version that, that can. What PG or what even talking about developer version? Consumer is the same, but per compiled something that would make sense able to prototype and get code do what jit all the time too much um, writes old school um, why not um, jit all the time so that when you upgrade your PC to AVX 512 the next time you run it you get the stuff AVX 512 jitted also yeah. William Leslie writes uh, oh, what else do we have um, Firmware lets you write both assembly language and program C, much like head and basic. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit also what I mean with a more amazing startup experience here of um, not... Like also imagine you have your full file system uh, read and write already early, like loading here this... Uh, loading here this... Uh, hardware extraction nano kernel from the BIOS or whatever um, and then load some file system modules and stuff and being able to access already a lot more than you would be able with grub and especially for cubes kind of multi-boot virtualization or full disk encryption like um, and certainly the way this could load I'm certainly and not too insane to think that works magically, but for example, um, this would be a little bit like init ID. So with this setup, we wouldn't have an init ID anymore, but we would have something similar of probably um, because also setlib, right? Even everything is code duplicated, compression stuff, setlib, set standard, and so we would have like one setlib that exposes the setlib API, like a regular elf object, for example, and. Um, the way this would load is that this would be pre-linked um, if, if you boot then from um, full disk encryption so that 
you would pre-link everything. So for example, like kernel um, dot elf uh, pre-link with whatever. So that like in it, our generation would be similar to kx caching on macOS. So that you this would be uh, pre-linked for booting whatever you might need um, of the kernel of let's let's call it like better fs elf that might need also some set lib uh, we could also call it as although um, doesn't really matter much if we call it whatever so that this would be like you would like prelinks is like init rd prelinking this for booting similar i think qnx probably did something similar and um, why do we need this you need this mostly because these are all separate user space processes so that um, the, the boot process for this kind of scenario because otherwise the whole microkernel would only load your kernel or something but certainly um, also supporting more boot bootable stuff there in the beginning this chicken egg problem needs to become somewhere but this would be the regular like lip set lip, set lip or something um, just whatever we call it here and so um, also some some crypto because again all of this stuff is already in your uh, bootloader right you have you have all of this stuff in in grub in case you're wondering um, so that this would be uh, preloaded potentially maybe with some, some other driver and again you would have drivers already in grub anyway maybe potentially um, but um, yeah just pre-link that um, if you needed that for some boot scenario or use case or not depending on of course only uh, only if you need this or not um, but that would be the flexibility of uh, this and again we oops it is not unlike what we have in grub 2 just like let's not make it a half working bootloader but let's do it once in a cleanly bootstrapped and um, cleanly bootstrapped um, and usable um, microkernel and this also means that if you write a driver in the Linux kernel, if you take a look at uh, the Linux kernel, the code is very specific in the drivers to the Linux kernel API, which is also why you can't just copy and paste it from a BSD to a Linux kernel um, with all the K object and not only print K and stuff, but um, this would also mean that like algorithms, we would uh, just clicking on the next best, best thing, um, yeah, certainly not with C and C structs, but uh, with also like K malloc, KF kernel. Also, yeah, raise your hand. We had this in the P3. Uh, can't even send network packets on the Ethernet driver because out of memory or some strange stuff. And um, yeah, writing stuff with normal malloc, with hopefully even without malloc because smarter memory allocation stuff um, and all this kernel specific stuff parsing here which anyway we don't want to use c functions but all this very kernel specific stuff and even like writing better fs in my opinion a developer dream i really wonder this the problem is that we so many people are stuck in this mindset of it needs to be c it, you can only do a kernel in c no you can't l4 is c plus there are c plus plus l4 variants um and other user space stuff even nowadays in QEMO also virtually you, you, we can do virtual, virtualization and other complex stuff in user space um, but uh, not the rest of the kernel what the heck and in my opinion it's a developer's dream to be able to not only use the regular APIs and not especially kernel APIs that have whatever special um, behavior and, and constraints and so on and, and threads like use normal P threads, whatever threads in your graphic server, and yeah, similar stuff. In my opinion, developer dream using regular APIs that you know by heart and also test sets, right? Very few test sets in all of this infrastructure. And um, with that, you would have a better FS project. It's again, it's not in kernel, it's a normal user space program. It would be one project like like fuse like file system and user space providing apis and all the other stuff you could have a nice test suite not no code duplication all in one better fs thing file system and tools all integrated all the the headers only once not once in the bootloader once in the kernel once in the user space stuff no once not three times with proper make test uh, test cases um, because all you know, the kernel code usually yeah let's compile edit and 
boot in a virtual machine and hope for the best. That's probably all is done often for testing, um, which is why we ended up with all the recurring um, reverts and um, similar. Oh, this was a small change anyway. Um, yeah, reverted HDA audio flung some, hey, Lungson, what? Anyway, you get the idea. Lungson, is it the MIPS stuff? Um, partial revert because constantly breaking stuff. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice to have a nice uh, test suit for all the level structures, uh, all the stuff you can do much easier with user space code. Uh, everyone is doing it, just not in our kernel. Um, Let's see, so I should really finish with the comments always. And so, um, probably should, where did we start? So there, not that much left in comments. Um, let's see, multi-boot is the standard for how we were models loaded to boot similar to arc -AFI. Yeah, so that's what I, what I meant, the standard set by GNU Hurt, I think, with GNU Grub booting, but that's x86 mostly only. But we will maybe not using this because we want to replace, replace Grub anyway, right? So we will have a whole uh, nano kernel uh, HAL anyway that loads our microkernel modules. Um, so this, this will be like Grub 2 modules, just that it's already our microkernel stuff. And um, yeah, I will probably start with ARC and PowerPC open firmware and AFI stuff and uh, see where we are going. Um, core Tuffle writes all roads lead back to Temple of S. No, certainly not. Uh, we will um, do this much more professional and also in use reusable stuff. I will anyway start in C++ because I'm not crazy. So we will start doing boot stuff and collecting all the link linker specific trickery and platform specific API for ARCs and uh, open firmware, Spark and PowerPC stuff before we continue. And we will also do more user space 3D stuff um, in Linux and low level DOS stuff before we move on. Um, and certainly do this uh, capture dongle thing. And um, yeah, anyway, if, if the landscape would be more amazing, I wouldn't do this, right? So I, it's not like I'm seeking for this. For 20 years, we are doing T2 Linux here with the Rocklinux heri uh, heritage. And if by the meantime, everything would be amazing, but you see, even the authors don't find it amazing. Um, they are um, one audio demon after the other, one system demon. First we had HAL and who remembers HAL and Dbus and systemd and UDEV and somehow it never ends except now everything. So systemd wants to take everything over. Uh, which is, in my opinion, also not the right solution. And now we have Pulse Audio, now we have Pipewire or whatever that was. Uh, no multimedia daemon ever will be enough. And if the infrastructure would be amazing, um, I wouldn't even think to do this, but even Xorg, um, all the old drivers, also with all the vintage collector's items we love, um, the hardware isolation is deleted. The new stuff is only there for a handful of new cards. And even then, uh, developing with that is not very developer friendly. Um, we have recurring Linux kernel issues um, again and again. Um, and um, if this also, yeah, Linux org, because it was obviously not so, maybe he, Linux Torvald, should have reversed it. Um, recurring bugs and features. So it's not Temple of S and um, commercial viability next video sometime soon. Um, but given that we are not that out of our mind, we will at least uh, use it here on our own stuff so that um, maybe actually should hurry that at least some of these portions um, of our own JIT stuff can already be used here in our own UI stuff and uh, similar things and um, un uh, comments uh, there uh, Anduin writes you had 30 years of work aka complexity piling still have out of memory and buffer issues yeah this is exactly the thing right 
if everything would be amazing. So uh, we do this 20 years and in 20 years we still have a PlayStation 3 that for whatever strange reason be due to low memory but there is even free memory and then I, I, I don't even understand how how strange the memory allocation in the Linux kernel is that the the Ethernet driver can't allocate memory to send out the uh, SKB buffer there. Um, it's hilarious and you I now patched this a little bit of disabling there some whatever heuristic of something um, but yeah it's not like or, or um, recurring theme here that multimedia stuff is not amazing um, sometimes USB or other issues and um, yeah uh, that began writes JIT all the time is not a problem look at the Java hotspot compiler which can optimize code further during running um, yeah or JavaScript and, and so on forward what there's the forward.com.info really for info. Hmm. Oh, really there is interesting stuff. Um, yeah, there you have something to read and write and discuss. Um, sucks variable length vectors um, and much like forward comp with way to make most loops easy to vectorize, why not make a simpler intermediate representation uh, simpler and jitted. So Mr. Bong says, make, why not make a simpler intermediate representation jitted? Yes, yeah, this is exactly what um, I want to do. So you see this is not that crazy. Um, and um, I hope I have it here, which also has been up because I did some JIT stuff uh, on, on MIPS the other day. So this is just prototyping. This is totally nothing to see, but um, I, it's already tested on uh, on a handful of architectures like x86, uh, okay, x86 MIPS stuff. And, but basically the, um, this will be um, like load, load store compute here. So basically this will be LLVM in simple, like keep it stupid simple. So this will be um, something like load integer um, eight. So basically LVM with all, all the complexity and overhead and, and, f and stuff. Um, and uh, similar to GNU Lightning, but maybe hopefully more readable code, um, something of that sort. The only complexity is, um, and then like all the at sub, also we wanna commit this also, yeah, actually I had this already here. So yeah, load, this is basically Z. Um, actually, now that we edit it already, we probably wanna um, load store, um, I and integer and um, stuff. So basically this will, the, will be the low level representation, not unlike LLVM, just a magnitude simpler. Um, maybe this is how they also started and then they try to support each and everything. I actually, um, I'm actually not even targeting um, uh, like performance of LVM GCC. I would already be happy if we uh, achieved like 90% or like with 10% with of the complexity, 90% of the performance of something, and then we will see where we are getting there. Um, but yeah, also maybe take notes from, I'm not really sure if I want to take and look into a Temple OS or Holy See, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I'm holding, anyway, likes of getting rid of obstruction. Uh, yeah, greetings to Wales, Devi, welcome. And yeah, so that, that's the plan, discussed all comments as usual when we discussed all comments and digress a little bit, then it always goes on forever. But that approximately is the plan. Um, and um, for the next years to come anyway. And again, because this also needs to be somehow financially viable, um, some of this stuff certainly will be used um, here in our products. Certainly this one, which is also why, why this crazy stuff that triggers people will be maybe one of the first, first things we will continue with. And uh, also maybe here's this, this HAL and infrastructure stuff that we used on the uh, early on in the RISC V FPGA um, firmware stuff that we probably want to revamp completely. And then stuff in the middle um, also earlier than um, earlier than later and uh, yeah it's not the highest priority obviously this is just some eventually someone um, should maybe doing that and again leave in the comments below um, what you think uh, by that um, 
Um, it's oh, especially in terms of programming, let's just pull out here some other do they have some formulas like why why not program more in some symbolic formulas like think uh, mathem was it ma um, what is it called like math mathematica right this commercial program here of um, whatever right it's not like you wanna write complex algorithms and stuff I means this is also the difference between really commercial like like top-notch commercial stuff research and development and um, uh, think um, yeah I, I really wonder why after so, but the, I, I don't actually wonder so the, to summarize with all the programming everything in C certainly we see that doesn't scale it's not neither neither fast to write code in this nor um, nor very secure nor performant and I really wonder, long story short, there needs to be a, a new, a new, a, like, like way, a new, a new level of advancing this from let's do everything in, in a glorified assembler front and that is C and more in um, algorithmic expressions of symbolic something maybe then we would have been already much further, not only in AI, uh, but also in uh, everything else. But certainly this is also why in research Python is more po popular, all the bio and medical stuff certainly more in Python than probably very few do and see. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, not the most drop frames today, 450 with what bit stream? Ah, okay, it wasn't the highest bit rate though just 3.4 uh, but maybe the toxis failing cable stuff is also getting the egg together uh, anyway so yeah, i hope you learned something as that is a general outlook of course we will continue with the small projects fpga stuff risk 5 low level stuff uh, graphic card programming because we have nvidia and ati which is also i wanted to get more into this low level stuff because um, Uh, what did I wanted to say? No, the comments distracted me. Uh, yeah, low-level stuff, um, getting more acquainted. Also, certainly nice that we did this fiber channel stuff on the sun that also took quite a while to get into there, if you have not seen that video. And um, with with Gazi mailbox kind of command buffer stuff there. Although the end result was a very tiny patch, but a recurring theme here that uh, finding the stuff and debugging it certainly often, lead, often takes 90% of the time as seen so often here so that looked like that here and just some tiny little endiness it's of course you debug this for eight hours and all you get is a five liner of endiness stuff but uh, i basically now have a full understanding of the driver because i in eight hours debugged one through the whole stack of that fun q logic driver in case we ever want to run that on uh, this kind of aging scarcity silicon but uh, yeah that's it for today I hope uh, you learned something and it was in some value in some form. Would be amazing if you subscribe to this or the more live channel and to see you soon for all the next videos and live streams to come.